Live, we're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. This just is stop. a sham. <laughs> <laughs> it's finally here. Drum roll. Welcome to DBL. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Yo, yo. Hey. Welcome to the panel, Stephanie Jones. Yes. Guys, we're like all suited and booted. Look at us. Well, I'm, I'm semi suited and booted, but no. everyone else is. You look fabulous. Look like we're about to knock over a casino. Ooh. Yeah, I can see that. And we had it all Ocean's planned out. DBL. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I would forget and mess it up, we know. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like that was Thursday. I was okay. Like, why I am I risking Tuesday. my life for Al Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> no way. We'd, we'd crush it. All right. <laughs> Yeah, we, we can take down a casino. I'm being positive about that. Let's get to some real stories. The fallout continues for Kanye, who, according to Forbes, has lost his billionaire status due to his anti-Semitic rants, of course. Foot Locker is the latest company to cut ties with him just a day after Adidas announced they're ending their $1.5 billion deal and will stop all production of the Yeezy brand sneakers. Speaking of which, Yeezy shoes are way up on resale sites. The Google search for sell Yeezys is up more than 500% and and selling for a reported 50% more than original cost. So now Spotify, the giant music streaming service, is facing pressure to remove Kanye's music. Spotify says for now the music will remain because the music doesn't contain any of the recent offensive speech. Now, Steph, I know you're new. Well, I'm sure you heard of this story, but mm. you haven't been on the panel all mm -hmm. week. What are your thoughts about this whole well, thing? So it's not just Spotify. Netflix, too, have yeah. said they won't remove any of their content that feature Kanye, too. Mm. And I think at this point, you know, separating the artistry from the per person is obviously, it's a blurred line here because it, uh, if we do it for Kanye, then also we've yep. got to go back to Michael Jackson, R. Kelly, yep. there's other people too, even though the topics are very, very different to what we're talking about with Kanye West. Um, but... I think, you know, I think we need to just stop talking about him and give him airtime altogether. Any form of media, to be honest, because it's just fueling his fire and the, the audience that sadly do listen to him and are going out and doing horrendous things. So I think we should, as a media outlet, not discuss Kanye, do not give him a platform. And then it's up to Spotify if they're going to continue to play him. I mean, he's like 19th of their most highly listened artists every single month, over 50 million listeners. Wow. So they're not going to want to lose that revenue. What, what, and then they'll just go and put it on his stem player anyway what do you think about re people profiting off of this al you mentioned it yesterday that people are going to profit resell his shoes at a higher price that's obviously happening but the site the real real i don't know if you ever heard of that they resell mm -hmm. yeah they resell like the designer okay yeah, yeah. It's just in case people out there don't know they they resell designer stuff they ban yeezys you can't resell them mm -hmm. so as a company profiting off of this al we always talk about profits if you owned a company like this would you ban the sale of yeezys or would profit margin play a factor? Pro profit margin would play a factor because I know the people. I'm part of the people, and the people are going to get what they want. Denying access to Kanye is just going to make him more popular. I'm not going to seek out Kanye music or documentaries. Uh, I don't think anybody on this panel is, but somebody will, and there is going to be an outlet, outlet for them to get that. Now, if I own a company, I, not me, but I'm saying if you own a company and you are interested in making profits, this is a an individual, regardless of how you think about them, that does drive profits. There are statistics to show this. So unless you are going to make a moral and judgment call on everything, which some people do with right. their business, other people are like, I'm in the business of presenting this platform, whatever's on here that is legal and people want to access, I want to make sure they can do that so I continue to put my kids through school. So it's, it's yes, it's about the owner and it's, it's about their principal, but I think a lot of times we have to understand that it's hard, Erica, to, un to undo capitalism from morality and from your thoughts and being oh. able to see a year into the future and how will this play out in a year if he makes everything all good? Do you bring his stuff back? And he says, no, now you can't. We've seen redemption stories, we've seen things fall apart, so I'm curious to see how this is going to happen, but I do understand why people will leave it up there. Yeah, I think that we're missing a big factor, and you alluded to it, and that's the consumer. It's we, the people. Right. So the, the reality of it is you still are going to reunions, barbecues, weddings, and people are playing R. Kelly. People yep. are playing, you know, music from a lot of people who were quote-unquote 
canceled. And there's a school of thought that what difference does it make if I purchased this music years ago or I'm playing it from a, I was going to say CD, but let's be real. Uh, like, <laughs> hey, I still know, rock CDs. Yeah. But it's like, you know, what difference does it make if I've already, con if I've already consumed this product, it's not giving this person any more money. Right. When you have a pair of shoes that you are going to resale and and profit personally from that, is that giving money to Kanye West bottom line? The truth is it's not. So there are gonna be people who are doing it for, or not going to support for reasons of saying, I am anti hate speech, I am anti what Kanye stands for. And there are gonna be people who say, yeah, I don't like appreciate hate speech, I'm anti what he says, but at the same time, I'm still gonna wear my shoes and I'm still gonna listen to songs and albums that I downloaded X amount of years ago, yeah. or maybe even months ago. Ago. So I think that when we're having this conversation, it really doesn't matter at this point. I think the most critical thing about it is that he doesn't have the platform to speak about it. Is it smart of us not to speak about it? And my answer would be emphatically no. When you do not have these conversations, and I understand why people keep saying it's giving him publicity, it's giving him publicity. The flip side of that is if we're ignorant of our history, we are bound to repeat it. So the moment that we say we're just going to shut this out and pretend like it never happened well what does it do it makes room for the next person to be more emboldened mm -hmm. and smarter about how they're going about their hate speech and propaganda because the truth of the matter is Kanye definitely is only going to listen to the profit margin and the bottom line the only thing that he understands is the value of the dollar now you have a situation with sway was right Sway was right because what happened with Adidas the right DJ. now? Right. Yeah. What happened with Adidas right now? He does not own Adidas. When Sway had that conversation with him about ownership from the beginning, he was the one that was backlashing and saying, no, you don't know what you're talking about, Sway. You don't know Sway. what you, yeah, right. Famous Jeff. Exactly. So now you're looking at someone who, yes, had a huge percentage of this massive company, but he didn't own it. And that's what happens when you run your mouth and you have consequences for things you don't own. And you just, rent and it. And just to, uh, to, to codify your point, uh, our, the reason they were able to play R. Kelly songs during his documentary about him being a monster is because he didn't own those songs. So they were able to play R. Kelly tracks over the R. Kelly, uh, the end of R. Kelly uh, documentary. So yeah. own your masters. You know what's funny? Yeah, we were talking remember, about Michael Jackson. I think it was last week or the week before. And you're like, they don't play Michael Jackson out of restaurants or bars anymore. I'm like, I I think they do. I'm not even joking. The very next day was Friday, and I went to go meet someone for a drink. I walked in, and Michael Jackson was playing. I was yeah. like, I got to tell Al, and I totally <laughs> forgot. Guess who gets the royalties? His estate? Exactly, yeah. because Michael Jackson owned that. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, because he bought them all back famously. All right, so switching gears, we've been talking about Matthew Perry's new memoir. In it, he says he broke up with Julia Roberts before <laughs> she could dump him. It started when Matthew was trying to woo Julia to appear on Friends. The two sent each other letters over facts, which led to phone conversations. When's the last time you used the word facts? I, huh? I think the, the Gen <laughs> Zers in here think you curse. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> so those conversations lasted hours. Julia ended up guest starring on Friends and the two dated. But Matthew says that was all too much for him. So he broke up with her preemptively to spare himself the agony of having Julia break up with him. Mm. Has anyone ever done this before? No. No? Our relationships have never worked like that. Uh, maybe someone broke up with you preemptively. No. N either way, it's never worked like that. Why? Why are you saying? Like you've never been intimidated by someone? No. Why am I asking you, Al? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm actually. I'm going to pass this to Steph because I was. I was a t entertainer for 20 years. There weren't a lot of relationships. That oh were my gosh. Longer than. You, okay. You know. All right. Just keep yeah. going. I, well, <laughs> you know, I we got it. Yeah. Al, talk, Al, yeah. talk to us. Give us some relationship advice. <laughs> Gosh, yeah, Al Jackson for romance advice on those. <coughs> no, um, I think this is like self-sabotage at its finest, but I'm the I'm the opposite way. So I'm not the person who leaves at the start when like they're like, oh, are they gonna leave me? I'm the person who stays to the bitter end at my own detriment, even if like the house is on fire and there's nothing left. I'm still I stood there like sweeping the ashes, like maybe it's fine. It's, it's not fine. that many ashes. And it's clearly not rebuild. fine. So I haven't done that, no. Uh, yeah, I yeah, I think you hit kind of hit it on the head when you said the self-sabotage. I have a feeling that you you know, he's been struggling for a while. And, uh, you know, as somebody that had issues with alcohol, yep. it's obvious when somebody comes in your life and they're not fooled by your smokescreen mm. of charm 
and they realize like, oh, there's there's issues here. And a lot of times you jettison that person because they see you, right. you know? It's like those uh, like those ghost movies or something where like they're moving around the house and then somebody sees them and they're like, how did that little kid know that I was here? It's like, that's how it is with, with when you're when you're struggling internally because all your friends are like, yeah, let's go party. But like somebody comes in from the outside like, hey, bro, what do we need to check that? And you're like, eh, you know, I'm not ready. And if you're not ready, you're gonna get rid of that person rather than change yourself. That is so profound yeah. and honest. Mm -hmm. it, it's very true. I mean, I can think of situations where you have, like, once you, I think more so in friendships than relationships for mm -hmm. me, but it's like, yeah, once you see something, it becomes unable to be seen. Right. So it's just, it's a harder way to have interpersonal relationships. And I can see people, like, jumping ship yeah it's weird though like someone of that stature at that time you're on top of the world you have everything everyone yes around you and then someone sees through that and right. you preemptively go i gotta break up with you because you see the true person i yeah. am right but you do have the best story ever i broke up with julia roberts over facts like, <laughs> who, who's got that story nobody we're done <laughs> coming out on dvl uncovering america's true crime obsession we talk with a health expert about the fascination with the jeffrey dahmer story and taylor swift's new music video sparks a fat phobia debate tori is breaking it all down in her segment um actually closed captioning provided by get I'm we gonna, really tickled, y'all. Yeah, yeah, take my yeah. <laughs> You're gonna sit here and okay. be right. I, have, I know y'all gonna be mad at me, but I'm just telling you the truth. You can smirk all you want. You don't have to tell me to go. <laughs> Brad Pitt, <laughs> <on> the <laughs> I want to ask Steph because she wasn't, uh, <laughs> it, well, it doesn't matter if you were here or not because we haven't talked about it. Uh, yeah. Did you see the, the whole controversy with Cardi B and, and Madonna, uh, Madonna saying she paved the way, right? Right. What are your thoughts on that? I, I think she did. I mean, like, yeah. I, I remember, I mean, I think every artist pushes the boundary, well, not every artist, but a lot of artists, like, push the boundaries and change Iconic the narrative. Artists, yes. Yeah, as they go along. So, I mean, when we look at, like, Lil Nas X and what he did, that was amazing. When Cardi B came out, she did do so many amazing things, or, like, Nicki Minaj, everybody in their own right, which is what makes them stand out, makes their career last that I was talking about them now on television, right? Right. But when I look back to obviously Madonna, and um, I was very young, you know, before I was even a teenager, she, she was shocking, you know, she was so right. different. She definitely did things that I hadn't seen before. Right. And I remember being about 11, 12 years old at my good friend's house, and her mom had the Madonna sex book. Mm. And I remember seeing it, and I was like, I couldn't believe what I'd seen. I was like, whoa, this is so different to anything I've Ab ever been exposed to. Absolutely. Let me ask you this, though, because I want to I get your thoughts on this. Um, and, Kavi, if you're, if you're listening as well, do you think that era okay. that she came up in had a big play? Because the 80s were wild, yeah. you know, drug-infused, uh, you know, a decade. But the 90s were very, oh, my gosh, there's AIDS and everybody's very conservative and we didn't see as many artists that were really pushing the sexual boundary so do you think it's like madonna came up in the early 80s where there was a, a big art scene and break dancing was coming and and we were rolling in off of the 70s do you think it was just the era that allowed madonna to be that because i don't know if she would have been accepted in the 90s the well, 90s like some, salt and pepper were making like right. let's talk about but sex madonna, it's not like madonna went away in the 90s but like, she, she kept pushing the envelope until where okay. she is now. I, I just think Madonna's always been an outlier mm -hmm. and like, you know, a provocateur as an artist. I'd agree with that. Welcome back. Celebs, people love them, people hate them. People love to hate them, especially the tabloids. So this week, we're talking about a star who hates cancel culture and a star who may get canceled because of this culture. But um, actually, are they even true? Marlon Wayans wants to cancel cancel culture. So in an interview, he said he doesn't know what planet we're on where people don't need laughter and people need to be censored and canceled. So does he even stand behind his un-PC White Chicks movie? Actually, Marlon said films like this are needed and said, quote, I'm still gonna tell my jokes the way I tell them. Last year, Marlon even said he's ready to make a sequel to White Chicks. 
So I don't think Marlon will be getting canceled over a movie that came out 18 years ago. Perhaps not. If a sequel were to come out, I do think jokes like this one may not fly anymore. I think I need a bigger size. Honey, you never need a bigger size. Come here. Oh, suck it in. Calling all Swifties. They're listening. Haven't you just been loving her new album, Midnight's? Well, not everyone is loving one of her new music videos. So people are calling T-Swift out for being fat phobic after this scene in her music video for Antihero. People say she should have known better than to use the word fat since this could be really triggering for people, especially young fans, which she has a lot of. Actually, the song is about her past struggles, including her fight with an eating disorder. So actually, this video could be more relatable than triggering to her young fans. So I say, shake it, huh? shake it. Huh? We're all Swifties here. That's all for this week. We'll be right back. Shake it. <laughs> it's important to surround yourself with the right people. The CDC recommends kids get all sorts of vaccines by a certain age, including chickenpox and hepatitis. On October 20th, the CDC voted to add COVID-19 to that list. Verify viewer Jacob texted the team to ask whether the COVID-19 shot is going on a mandatory vaccine list for children. And lots of people questioned if this vote made it mandatory for kids to get the COVID-19 vaccine in order to go to school. So let's verify. Is the CDC requiring children to get the COVID-19 vaccine for school? Our sources are the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, Javier Becerra, and the National Conference of State Legislatures. According to the NCSL, the CDC Advisory Committee cannot mandate which vaccines are required for children to attend school. This is determined by state law. U.S. Secretary of Health and Human Services, Javier Becerra, also confirmed that the CDC's decision is not about vaccination requirements, and any indication is otherwise untrue. So we can verify, no. The CDC isn't requiring children to get the COVID-19 vaccine for school. According to the NCSL, many states do align their vaccine requirements with the CDC's recommendations. But some states, like Florida, have explicitly banned student COVID-19 vaccine mandates. And other places, like D.C., didn't wait for the CDC's decision to make the COVID-19 vaccine a requirement for their students. Kids 12 and older in DCPS were required to get the vaccine this year. With your Verify, I'm Ariande Till. Are you skeptical of headlines and what you see on social media? We are too. The Verify newsletter answers your questions, clarifies what's true and false, and even includes a daily fun fact. Go to verifythis.com slash email to check it out. This is Glenda Cleveland. Can you send an officer to the Oxford Apartments? Somebody is either being hurt or killed. What do you want me to do, Miss Cleveland? Your job. Welcome back. That was a clip from the Netflix series Dahmer Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story that we've been talking a lot about recently. Earlier, we sat down to talk about the psychology behind watching true crime with licensed marriage and family therapist Kate Morton. Check it out. Welcome back, Katie. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having me, Katie. This is something that's so fascinating to me, and there are people out there that fall in love. We're going to jump right in and idolize these serial killers, and I'm, I don't want to get too far down the rabbit hole. I want the death penalty for people like this, so we don't idolize these people. They don't get the, the opportunity, but they'll send letters and pictures and money and want to marry them. What is this obsession? Yeah, I find it really interesting as well. The truth about it, I mean, it, there's mainly two core reasons. Number one, they get attention. Like you said, they're a celebrity, right? They're really powerful in a lot of ways, even as creepy as that may sound. And we're attracted to that celebrity and that attention. And then the second most common reason is honestly probably the way we were brought up wanting to fix someone or you know be the person that makes them better we can like people who are I, I know this is a bad term but broken and some people like to get in relationships with those types of people right fascinating is the right word and yeah. disturbing um okay so katie we spoke a lot about the family members of Dahmer victims when the series was released i can't even imagine what they must have 
gone through and been re-traumatized. We also got some viewers saying that by accidentally hearing about it, it re-traumatized and re-triggered them from violent crime. So what are those individuals going through and what are the family members going through? I think it depends on the person and it depends on where they are in their process, you know, where they are in the healing of trauma. If we haven't fully process it or we're still affected by it, then it's going to be incredibly triggering and possibly re-traumatizing. Like those people who said, oh, it reminds me of my past, right? That can be really hurtful. And I would encourage those people to avoid the show if possible. But there might be a subset of people who are looking for some information or some fact that we didn't think about or just something to give them closure. And so those people might tune in. They might actually find it helpful in their process. And so if anybody out there is, you know, on the fence about it, you know, talk with your therapist if you're seeing one. I hope you are. And, you know, be cautious and do what's best for you. So, Katie, why are these true crime shows and podcasts so addicting to people, especially it seemingly it seems to be addicting to women in particular? Yeah, I'm one of those people, too. I have to be honest. I love Law & Order SVU. Any crime show that's out there, I have watched it. Um, the truth is that our nervous system is wired to seek out threat in our environment. It's always mm. looking, it's adaptive, right? It keeps us alive. And so when we watch these shows, in a way we're understanding a potential threat, right? Someone could break into my home or someone could, you know, I don't know, mug me on the street. We know those threats are out there. And so by watching this, we get to know more about it. And the good thing, if you're a Law & Order SVU fan like I am, Olivia Benson and Stabler, they catch the bad guy. Mm -hmm. And then we're like, yay, I feel better, right? That threat is almost somewhat neutralized because I, I understand it and I can manage it and I see the bad guys get caught. And I find women tend to be more in that bucket because unfortunately we're more, of, uh, we're more at risk. I mean, I've, you know, my husband's never told me he's walked to his car with car, his keys right. between his fingers, but I do, you know, and there's a lot of things that I think men don't always understand about our experience. And so I think by and large, we are the ones that want to make sure we understand the threat and we know how to at least manage it, if not neutralize it. Okay, quick question here, because we only have 30 seconds left, but I really want to know where can you said that you're consuming a lot of true crime, but that has to have some mm -hmm. effect on you. So what effect does taking in a lot of true crime have on the individual? Yeah, it can for some people if it's getting in the way of your ability to sleep, that would probably be the first thing to go if it's too much and it's affecting your functioning. We should probably minimize it or do what I call like a brainwash where I'll watch some show that's just a little bit more mellow, like keeping up with the Kardashians, for example, just to kind of get my brain out <coughs> of true crime mode so that I can go to sleep. Great advice. Katie, we always appreciate you. Thank you so much for joining us on DBL. And to our viewers, make sure to follow Katie's YouTube channel, which you can find just by searching Katie Morton. We'll be right back. Thank Thanks, you. Katie. Promotional consideration is brought to you by... Staying on top of this story, and that means not just tracking the numbers or health alerts, but finding out what you need to know in your own home about this virus. So we turn to several sources to verify. What is RSV? Short for respiratory syncytial virus, the CDC lists RSV symptoms of runny nose, decrease in appetite, coughing, sneezing, fever, and wheezing, typically appearing in stages rather than all at once. Dr. Ruth Cantula, MedStar pediatrician, says it's often hard to tell the difference difference between RSV and other common viruses, but it's very easy to transmit, spread through droplets of coughs and sneezes in the air or on infected surfaces where the virus can live for hours or through direct contact. There's no vaccine to prevent it, and you can get it more than once at any age. The most vulnerable populations are children who are less than two years old. Our experts say babies are more prone to lower respiratory tract infections, plus inflammation of the airways or lungs from RSV, and can't naturally compensate for breathing issues like older kids and adults. So if I can't breathe through my nose, I know I can breathe through my mouth. Babies don't know 
that necessarily. RSV symptoms also tend to be more severe in adults age 65 and older. How is RSV treated? Most cases go away in a week or so, says the CDC, which recommends managing symptoms with over-the-counter meds and drinking plenty of fluids. RSV most often requires hospitalization because of dehydration or difficulty breathing. In babies, Dr. Cantula says poor feeding or irritability could also be signs they need more oxygen. If you notice that um, your child's symptoms are lasting for a longer period than would be expected, that would be a reason to take your child in to have them evaluated by the pediatrician. Avoid spreading RSV. Wash your hands, cover your mouth, keep your distance, and stay home when you're sick. Those back to basics health tips that are so good at preventing common seasonal bugs work here too. And that's important because some, adults especially, could have RSV and not even know it. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico. Scientists say climate change is destroying wetlands along the North Carolina coast. Let's connect the dots. Once healthy wetlands now have miles of gray and barren trees. So what's happening? Frequent flooding caused by rising temperatures is killing plants. The salt in ocean water is slowly creeping into trees and destroying wetlands. Now the rising sea levels is causing forests to transition into marsh ecosystems. Scientists call them ghost forests. The phenomenon isn't new, but researchers say its spread is alarming. And the transition is happening faster than ever before. There are big impacts on what this means for the environment. Researchers say loads of carbon are stored in these trees, but they're all getting destroyed, hurting everything from plant life to the oxygen we breathe. And that's Connecting the Dots. Welcome back. Many people suffer from joint pain and sniff stiffness as the temperature drops. It's time for some joint and muscle support brought to you by Omega XL. Because of the winter chill, people experience joint aches and stiffness in their knees, ankles, and hips. And if you have arthritis, the winter season just heightens your existing pain. So here's what you can do about it. First, dress warm. One of the first ways to avoid joint pain and stiffness is by layering up, especially when you're going outside. The key to keep your hands and feet covered and warm at all all times. That's the key. Next regular exercise, uh, bone and muscle strength. This will reduce the pressure on your joints, keeping them flexible and improving blood flow. And finally, when it comes to joint health, maintaining a healthy intake of vitamin D is essential. Vitamin D helps with joint healing, so get enough sunlight and eat vitamin D rich foods like fish, eggs, and oatmeal. Omega XL has improved the lives of millions of consumers supported by 30 years of clinical research. Omega XL's powerful and proven benefits have transformed the lives of athletes, celebrities, and dedicated daily users. Call 1-800-686-5325 or visit OmegaXL.com for more info. Al, we're getting older, buddy. Are you feeling any of the Al, joints when it gets cold? You know, that, you know, well, I broke my wrist playing oh. basketball like 20 years ago, and I feel it when it gets cold. And I was like, this is what my old uncles would be like, oh, it's about to rain. My knee hurts. I'd be like, all right. <laughs> it's a real thing because of the pressure. Like when you it broke is. the bone, you're like, oh, my wrist hurts. And it does. It's very old school, but very farmer, farmer's almanac of me. And you guys yes. are in your 20s, so it doesn't yeah. count. Right. We'll see you guys tomorrow. <laughs>